going to Hebrew school as a, as a small child and, and reading the Bible for the first time. And I didn't really want to read it because it was this big, thick book and, you know, and I thought it would be boring. And then I started <laughs> reading it and was immediately struck by how funny it was. And I thought it was as funny as any of the humorous fiction that I had been reading. For example, when God first appears to Abraham, uh, Abraham is 99 years old, and the first thing God says is, uh, I'm the Lord thy God. And then Abraham is like, registers that. And then the very next thing he says, without missing a beat, is circumcise your penis. And he goes right to it. There's no segue, and there's no transition. And then it's like five pages of him telling him how to do it. And it's pretty graphic detail. So I was like, what if the sort of reason why the earth is the kind of chaotic way that it is, is because the guy in charge doesn't have all of the answers. What if the person in charge is maybe a little irrational, a little impulsive, a little overmatched by the burdens of running planet Earth? Simon, give us a breakdown of your show. Sure, so uh, Steve Buscemi plays God. And he is the founder and CEO of Heaven Inc., which is the uh, gigantic corporation in the sky that runs and maintains planet Earth. And like a lot of companies, it's kind of just fallen into disrepair. It's become inefficient. Uh, the Earth population grew way more wildly than they thought. And so they're just underfunded and overburdened, and, and uh, uh, Steve, as God, is kind of in the midst of a midlife crisis. So he decides, it, rather than throw good money after bad, he'll do the logical thing, which is to blow up the earth and pursue his new dream, which is to open up a restaurant. I know it's been a rough few thousand years, but you've still got a lot of fans down there. Do you know how long it's been since someone sacrificed a ram to me? I thought that grossed you out. You know, it did, but at the same time, there was something nice about it. And then it's up to some uh, <coughs> uh, very low-ranking angels in the, uh, the Department of Answered Prayers, which is like the worst department, and it's up to these underdogs to try to convince uh, God to uh, not pull the plug on planet Earth. So I've decided to blow up Earth. And Daniel, you play Craig, one yes. of the angels that works in the miracle department. The prayers come to him and it is his job to answer them. But I think uh, after a long, after a lot of time in the department, um, he is really, he's so terrified of failing at something that he has sort of scaled back his ambitions as a, as a answerer of prayers to really just deal with lost keys, lost gloves, small lost items that can be kind of easily found or revealed by blowing something off of it. So that's kind of where I am at the beginning of the series and then I meet Geraldine's character, Eliza, and she uh, is kind of the diametrically opposed sort of to, to all of that and is, is just sort of energy and bold and has big ideas and is very ambitious in what she wants to do. And so she kind of draws me out of myself and, and sort of we, we become a team which we then recruit Karen onto because Karen starts the, the series way outranking all of us and then yeah. comes and slums it. There is a sort of existential sense of doom that has <laughs> permeated a, uh, the culture and I think there is a, a hunger for shows that try to explain the chaos of our lives, of our day-to-day -day reality. Like everyone has a notion of heaven growing up, even if you like if you come from a kind of secular or, or, or not heaven necessarily, but an afterlife from whatever religious background you have. So I feel like there's so much because it's a it's a universal thing. There is a lot to you, everyone has expectations or conceptions about it that you can play with and have fun with and sort of subvert. And I, I very much like how kind of convoluted and bureaucratic our heaven is in, in this one. And the goal was always to try to come up with a vision of the afterlife. That was my, my challenge when I was first writing the novel is, can I come up with a vision of the afterlife which is consistent with our actual day-to-day -day reality, where things seem to happen randomly and horribly, <laughs> constantly. And so that's, that's the, uh, that was kind of the, the driving force behind it. Let's talk about casting the most important character, uh, Steve Buscemi. Well, maybe not the most important character, but he is God, Steve Buscemi. He's God, you gotta get that right. <laughs> what was, what's it like working against God or with God and Steve, and what was your vision for this character as well? 
my parents came to visit because they live in Georgia. We filmed in Atlanta, and we were filming a scene on the set. And our set it's like pretty scary. We were like filmed in this abandoned fiber optics building, where several dystopian movies apparently have been <laughs> yeah. filmed. Uh, but it worked great for our thing. But they, my parents just came on the set, and they were like very lost. And Steve was just saw them like hanging around, and he like took them under his wing, and he knew they were my parents because they were the only other Indians, um, <laughs> I'm guessing. And then he took them to craft service, and then later on they were like, oh, we met that guy. I'm like, guys, that's the lead of the show. <laughs> and they just couldn't believe it because he was like so but that's just him he's just very unassuming and very sweet the and sweetest nice. guy yeah and he loves working it seems yeah, like he loves anything. like yeah. yeah he loves just and he seemed like he really enjoyed working on the show yeah know? and he really just he gave this character a, a, a depth and uh and pathos that was so exciting to see because you know it, it is it, he does a lot of silly things this this character he loves to make bets he love he wants to start a restaurant called Lazy Susan's, but at the heart of it is this deep insecurity, and then and um, he just wants people to like him, and he feels like a failure. In one episode, you actually learn that he comes from a family of gods, and his siblings and parents, all of them, his mother, his father, his sister, they're all hugely successful gods who have started perfect utopian planets where nobody dies and everything is bliss, and he made Earth. <laughs> and he's kind of the black sheep, and he feels bad about it. And so it's 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 all out of, it's all out of a, a, this need to be liked. And Steve just gave his character so much depth and pathos, and I can't wait for people to see him in it. Mm -hmm.